Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Cami Griffith, and I am providing this overview of Kurzweil to you from Kurzweil Education. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen, and then I will begin talking simultaneously as I share my screen. But the intent today is to provide an overview of Kurzweil 3000 to you. Hi, Pam. I'm going to take a pause and wait to see if, if some more people join before I continue on. Uh, but to give you a little verbal overview for those who are on right now, um, Kurzweil is literacy support software. And what it helps address is study skills, writing, and increased independence during test taking. I'm going to go ahead and wait a few more minutes to see if some more people join. OK, thanks so much. I'll put myself on mute for another minute or two. And I did start the recording already. I think I'll go ahead and get started, um, but I'll definitely send the link to the recording after. Does that sound okay, Pam? Yes, that works. Okay, great. Um, so for those who missed a couple of minutes ago, um, I'm Cami Griffith from Kurzweil. Um, you all have access to a, a campus-wide subscription to Kurzweil 3000, and Kurzweil is literacy support software it addresses reading, study skills, writing, and test taking. Um, there are different parts or modalities to the tool or program. There's an installed version, so an application, it can be installed on any Mac or Windows computer. No one needs to ask. They can definitely go ahead and do that if they want to use the installed version. There is a browser version of the software. And there's also, a, <clears throat> excuse me, a read the web extension for reading websites. Today, I'll focus on two of those three modalities. I'll focus on the browser version of the software as well as the Read the Web extension. And before I go right into the program, which is really the most effective way to show it, um, or for you to learn about it is just by showing it to you, I want to show you two helpful websites that are there as resources. I am also here as a resource. So feel free to reach out to me at any point in time, either via email or phone. Um, the first website I want to point out is Kurzweil's YouTube channel. And on the YouTube channel, there are playlists. And in each playlist, there are short training videos. So we created a, a playlist just as a way to categorize or organize, organize those videos. Um, and we will continue to add to Kurzweil's YouTube channel. So the next website I'd like to show you is... Um, our main company website, the organizational website, and the URL is kurzweiledu.com. And the area of the site that will be most helpful for you is Kurzweil Academy. Wow. And under Kurzweil Academy, there are getting started guides. So in the product guides folders, there are all different guides. Um, I do find the getting started guides are the most helpful if you are familiar with the program. Um, I'm going to ask if everyone could please mute yourself uh, during the Zoom, but if you have uh, uh, questions, then go ahead and unmute yourself. That way we won't hear any background noise. Thank you. Um, so in addition to the product guides, all of these black folders have additional short videos in them. They're anywhere between like three to five minutes. So moving right along, um, I'm going to start off by showing you and talking about the browser version of Kurzweil. 
this is first of all accessible from any device or location so whether a student is working from their phone an ipad a chromebook a macro windows computer it is accessible from any device uh, any browser so i'm in chrome right now but it, you certainly don't have to uh, be in chrome to use the program so you will need to know your username and password to log in or there is an option for single sign on if that's ready on your campus. Um, the tool you are subscribing in a way that all students, all staff, all faculty can have access to the tool. So that means every single student can be on the roster and given their own unique username and password. Again, unless you're moving to the single sign on option, which does make things easier. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in using my username and password, the URL, is Kurzweil the number 3000.com and what I'll do today Kurzweil is feature rich there are a ton of features in the tool I'll give you an overview and a sample of some of the features to support what Kurzweil does best so some of the features to support reading um, comprehension or study skills some annotation tools um, writing and then I may show a sample test um, so when you log into Kurzweil, you will see, actually as a student, you'll see two tabs at the top. I see three, which is a My Account tab. It's more of an administrative part of the program. So you'll see a Universal Library tab and a Help area. The Universal Library is really where everything is done. It's where the reading takes place. Um, and so I'm in that tab right now. Everyone starts off with two folders, so you can see my name. I start off with two subfolders, a public and private folder. And once you begin using the program and familiarizing yourself with it, you'll want to create subfolders. So I've created some subfolders, and this is um, a sample of my classes right now. So I'm taking biology, English, math, and psychology. You may decide a different system for folders is better for you. Maybe it's semester one, term one. Um, and then what you do is you begin putting reading assignments, textbooks, or other reading material into those folders. And so I've taken a sample biology text. This was a PDF that was saved to my desktop, and I've brought it into Kurzweil. I could spend a long time talking about bringing content into the tool, but I'll tell you it's quite easy, and there are different ways to do it. It's really dependent on what you're trying to bring in. Are you trying to bring a textbook in? Are you trying to bring in you know, a Word doc that's on your desktop? So there are different ways and methods for bringing text into Kurzweil, but it will open and read anything. The first step is to get it into a digital format. So this was a PDF on my desktop, and what I did to get it into Kurzweil was I selected computer on the upper right, I'm not going to do it now, but then I navigated out to that particular um, article on plant diversity. And as soon as I selected it, Kurzweil went through a process of <coughs> recognizing the text and the graphics if there are any. And so I'm going to go ahead and open this article. And once it's open at this point, then I'll begin to show you some of those features to support reading, study skills, and writing. Um, so Kurzweil can really be customized. Um, so you as a student can really customize the program um, to meet your individual needs. For instance, what's helpful for me might not be helpful for the next person. And because everyone has their own unique username and password, it will remember your credentials. Of course, you can save them on the fly. It will remember what you've chosen. So I'll pause for a minute to talk about who it can help. Kurzweil can really help anyone that's having a difficult time keeping up with the pace and rate of their reading assignments. It can also really help people with writing assignments. And it's very commonly used for increased independence during test taking if you're someone that has a read aloud accommodation during tests. Um, it really helps a lot of people um, with reading in and of itself to make reading an easier, quicker, faster, more enjoyable process for a lot of students. So on the upper left, I'll begin by showing you some of the features along the upper part of the program, and then I'll move sequentially down. 
Um, so first of all, what Kurzweil does is it reads text aloud and it highlights as it does that. So when it reads aloud, we buy as a company now something called acapella text-to-speech voices. And there's a wide range of voices to choose from. There are male speakers, female speakers, speakers of different languages. So hopefully you can find a voice that you're comfortable with and certainly play around with them. They sound, each and, each and every one sounds different. Um, when Kurzweil begins reading and highlighting, if it's going too quickly and you're having a difficult time following along, you can slow down the rate of speech. And vice versa, if it sounds funny because it's talking too slowly, you can certainly bump it up. And then by default, it will read, um, sorry, it will highlight one sentence at a time and it will read in a continuous mode, but you have the option to change those things as well. So let me just go ahead and place my cursor before some text and then I'll select the read button at the top. And at that point, the highlighting and the text to speech will begin. A seed consists of an embryo in its food supply surrounded by a protective coat. When mature, seeds are dispersed from their parent by wind or other means. And then I'll show you some other things over here. So this is a short PDF, it's uh, 18 pages. If this were a longer textbook, there's a document view, which is really like a preview option where you can look at a small thumbnail view of each page. And again, not necessarily helpful with an 18 page PDF or if it were a longer textbook and you want to get a sense of what each page or different chapters look like, then that view may become more helpful. Um, and one more thing under view, if you need to really zoom in to see the page better, if you deselect document zoom, you can then use the slider to zoom way in or way out. And if you just keep it at fit width, it will fit appropriately to your, to your page. Um, so the read buttons are in the middle. I'm gonna circle back to the tool that has the three dots. That's actually the voice dictation feature and I'll explicitly show that in just a couple of minutes. Um, moving along on the upper right, there are a series of reference tools. So I'll show a couple to you. There's a picture, a dictionary, a picture dictionary, there's translation. And let me just show a couple of those to you. So anywhere throughout your text, <laughs> if you'd like to look at a definition of a word, you can click before the word or select the whole word and then select dictionary and you'll see a definition. And anywhere there's text, you have the option to hear that text aloud for the text to speech simply by selecting the read button. Seed, no, plural, seeds or seed. And you also have the option to keep diving down if you'd like to. So for instance, if I select the word or click before the word propagative, I think I pronounced that correctly, um, I can select a definition for that. Um, for some students, it helps them to see a picture. So I put my cursor before the word seed, and if I select picture dictionary, I'll then see a picture of that word. And I mentioned translation. So if um, there are any English language learners, um, he or she has the option to select any amount of text. I'll just select a little bit here, and then translate that text to a different language. And then depending on the language, you can also have the option, uh, you can also hear that text read aloud in the other language. So if I select translation and I've chosen Spanish, first translate, we'll just translate the written text. And then when I select read, it knows to choose a Spanish speaker to have that text read aloud. Saco, cuando maduran, Las semillas se dispersan de sus padres por el viento u otros medios. I'll take a quick pause before I move on, but for those of you that are on today, um, do you have any questions so far or comments? So feel free to unmute yourself. I'll open also open the chat window if anyone would like to use it. Um, Robert, you may be asking a question. I'm not sure, but I think you're muted.
Okay, sorry. I was having problems unmuting myself. I missed the very beginning. You said something about um, the license and our accessibility, our ability to access Kurzweil. Yeah, definitely. So what, what you all have is a campus-wide subscription to Kurzweil, which means that really any and all students and or staff can access the tool. But the first thing you'll need to have or know is your username and password. And so someone, the administrator of the account will actually have to put you on the roster. And then once you're on the roster, you'll be given your own unique username and password. The other thing I had mentioned, and I can't recall in past conversations, um, is there is an option for single sign-on. So if, um, if the University of the District of Columbia is using SSO for anything else, that is an option as well to use single sign-on rather than having the username and password. And I believe we are using SSO. So I believe students and faculty and staff are able to sign on with their UDT email and gain access. Great. Um, so beyond today, I would test it to make sure that you are able to access it. And if you're not, please feel free to reach up back out to me and we can figure out um, what needs to be done so that you can access the tool. But thanks for your question. Um, so I talked a little bit about the reference tools. One other thing while I'm here, um, there is an option um, to create a vocabulary or a word study guide. So if a student was reading text and there were lots of challenging words there and they wanted to quickly just familiarize themselves with those challenging words or begin to study them, the way that you can create a study guide is by doing the following. So I've gone ahead, I'm gonna to go to page three and I'm pre-highlighted some words. So I've highlighted integument, ovule and pollination. And the way I highlighted those words is on the left, there are a series of highlighters. So I just chose a highlighter and then dragged my cursor across those words. And to create the study guide um, on the bottom left or on the left hand column on the bottom, I have the option in column notes, if I select the feature that has the arrow coming up and out to the right, Kurzweil will extract those words and their definitions into a new three column note file where it will show or display the word on the left and then the definition or definitions on the right. And so you can see here, it gave me those three words on the left. Again, anywhere there's text, there's text to speech. So I can <laughs> have that read aloud if I want to. A natural um, And some other things, um, if a student wanted to cover or hide columns, maybe to test or quiz their own knowledge, they can do that. They can certainly print this new document. They can save it and give it a new name. So if this maybe were chapter one of a textbook, but this weekend they plan to read chapters two through four, maybe they can continue to extract and add new words to this document. Um, I said I would circle back to the feature with the three dots. That's Kurzweil's voice dictation or speech to text feature. So Kurzweil functions both as text to speech, meaning it reads text aloud, but you also have the option to dictate. And you can dictate whether it's just taking a short note or dictating an entire paper. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate it to you right now. It works really, really well within the browser version of the software. So I'm going to create my own definition for the word integument. And so actually I'm gonna change the column header to say my definition. Oops, my cap locks is on, there we go. And to enable the voice dictation, you place your cursor where you'd like it to begin and then you simply select the three dots. And as soon as you start speaking, it will begin picking that up. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate it right now for you. Um, you can't see my setup, but what my desk looks like is I have a laptop um, and two external monitors. I'm probably, I don't know, 10 to 12 inches away from my laptop, but you'll see it pr picks it up pretty well. I would say it does that consistently, as long as you're not in an area where there's a lot of background noise. And if there were, just use um, headphones, um, you know, so it's blocking out some of that background noise. Let me go ahead and demonstrate it for you. Integument is a protective outer layer in a plant or animal, period. 
Um, if it doesn't pick up your speech or you need to change some words, you can go in and, and simply edit um, as you'd like. So let me move on here. Um, I'm gonna begin going down and showing or showing you some of the features on the left-hand column here. And then once I'm done showing and talking about the browser version of the software, I'll move into Kurzweil's Read the Web Extension, um, which is used for reading any website. It also integrates really, really well with LMSs. So if staff or faculty are putting assignments into an LMS, it will work with that too. Um, so the bookmark feature on the upper left is important. Again, not necessarily with an 18 page document, you can easily navigate here or there, but if you were reading a longer textbook, you may, that doesn't have previously embedded bookmarks. If it does, Kurzweil will bring those in, but if it doesn't, you can add bookmarks and it's very easy. So I'm on page three right now. I'll go ahead and add a bookmark to page three. So if I, oh, oh you know what? Let me move to the next page. It wasn't letting me, let me see if this works. There we go. So um, it will, by default, select a title for you, but you can give it whatever title you want that makes sense for that area of the text. Um, and then you select add, and you can see this little bookmark icon. Now what happens if I go back to page one, and then I select bookmarks, there it is. So it, it gave it the title of stored. Stored. And go to, and it will go straight to that page. So it, it's quick and easy to make bookmarks. Again, if they aren't predetermined within the text that you bring in. Um, I'm gonna jump down to the note-taking area of the program. So there are different ways that students begin can begin to annotate or mark up their text. So it's quick and easy to create a sticky note. And these just look like the colorful notes that we have. You can change the color, the size, the font. Um, so I'll say we read chapters two and three. Um, there are also text notes, which are the same. They're just clear instead of having a colorful background. If you wanna get rid of a note after, you can simply collect, um, select the X mark. You also have the option to embed an audio note so if it's easier just to create a quick recording as a reminder, you can do that. And I've actually done that on the last page and I'll show you that audio note. So it shows up as this speaker icon and then to get it to play, you just select it. On June 10th, use the study area to take the practice test. And to create that audio note, it's really easy. So from the notes area, you would select the icon that has a speaker button and then go ahead and just start a new recording. And again, when it's done, it just shows up as that speaker icon. And so if it's easier to just create a quick voice note, you can do that rather than a written text note. Um, let's see here. Um, I want to talk a little or more than a little about the writing area of Kurzweil. Kurzweil has really grown in terms of its capacity to support several aspects of the writing process, whether it's creating a brainstorm or an outline, um, you know, drafting, revising, it can support all of that. And so for any student that is having a difficult time with any aspect of the writing process, Kurzweil may help. So, um, one way that you can use it for writing is to actually use some of the writing templates within the program. And I'll show those to you. And these are designed to help students get started with their writing assignment. So for anyone maybe that needs extra help with executive functioning or planning type skills, these may be helpful. So I'll go back to the Universal Library. Again, that's the home area of the program. And all of these folders in blue on the bottom are available to anyone, anyone who logs into the tool. And the templates folder are where the writing templates live. And I'll go ahead and open the higher ed folder. And you can see these are all alphabetized. And so when a student is looking in this folder, the first step is to choose a writing template that aligned with his or her purpose for writing. Let me go ahead and open an academic essay. 
um, it's going to give me a note here, just something in terms of using this, this writing template. So if a student looked at this and they thought, you know, this, this is good, it looks really helpful, but right now I don't, I don't necessarily need to include all of these details. These can easily be customized. And so if a student wanted to change any of these, um, if a student were working in a writing center and a teacher had an input, these can easily be changed or modified and then you can just do a save as. Um, anywhere there is a piece of paper. So above academic essay, there's a piece of paper. If you expand that, it will then give you more information on what that is. So I'll go ahead and read more information on academic essay. Typical format for an academic paper includes an introduction and a thesis. The thesis is supported by a series of body paragraphs with subpoints and a conclusion. And so then a student can begin filling this in. Um, I didn't necessarily choose one that made sense for plant diversity. Um, but then I could put an introduction, you know, uh, details, etc. cetera. Um, when someone has completed their outline and they're ready to go and add more details, so to expand on their outline, one thing that's generally helpful is to change the view. So there's an option to split your screen which will put your outline in more of a linear view. You can do that at any point in time as well. You can look at the outlines either in an outline view or as a brainstorm graphic organizer. But when you split your screen, it's gonna bump your outline over to the left and then leave a blank draft area on the right. And then from here, students can drag and drop text over. They can begin typing. They can dictate as I showed before. Um, but the point being is they can still look and listen to their outline while they have a draft area to begin adding more detail. And I'll go ahead and take another pause um, to, to see if there are questions or comments. No? Okay. Um, well, I want to keep moving on. And what I'd like to do at this point is actually switch over to the Read the Web extension. But before I do that, while I'm in this writing area in nice big font, I'm going to type my contact information in as well as the telephone number for tech support. So Kurzweil is a very reliable tool, extremely. That being said, it's technology, it's software. Once in a while, there may be a feature that doesn't work or if something's frustrating and seemingly doesn't work, that would be a time to reach out to tech support. So let me give you their number. And actually, I'm going to make it bigger. Uh, let's go big. And their number um, and it'll voice prompt you through, but that's the telephone number, their extension three. And then I work as a salesperson, but my job is really very much a combination of both sales and training. So questions can certainly be brought to my attention too. If it's something that is more technical or backend, I'll have to defer you over to tech support, but I can usually determine that right away. And I certainly don't want to waste anyone's time. Um, so I am Cami Griffith. I actually live in Massachusetts. I work all throughout New England and then most of the Southern states as well. So I almost cover the entire coast. Um, during or pre-COVID times, I would travel extent extensively. I am obviously not doing that now. Hopefully I'll resume again one day, but for now I don't wanna travel and I don't think people want me coming to their campus or campuses, uh, but I will look forward to it one day. So my telephone number is the same, but I'll give you my extension. So let me just copy and paste this and then I'll change the extension. So I am extension 653. And then I also am available obviously via email and it's cami.griffith at kurzweiledu.com. Um, I think I did mention I am recording this, so I will send the recording out after. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this tab and move right over to Kurzweil's Read the Web extension. And I know I mentioned it before, but this will work to help students read any website and it will also integrate well with LMSs. So I'm in Canvas right now. 
Um, but what I need to do first, I've already done it, is Kurzweil's Read the Web Extension can be added to either a Chrome or Firefox browser. So what I did here was I visited the Chrome web store, I did a search for Kurzweil, and then I added it to my Chrome browser. And you will need to know your username and password. So single sign on isn't an option here. You will need to know a username and password in order to enable your, your extension. And once you log in, it shows up as a toolbar that hovers over that website. Um, and so this is the toolbar. It has some of the features that the browser and installed version has, not quite as many, but enough to really support reading and some comprehension. And so I'll just point out some of those. So it works in a similar manner to get it to begin reading. You place your cursor where you'd like the text to speech to begin and select the read button. As a group project during the 1997 Hummingbird Banders Conference at Southeast you have the option to go back or forward. So if you want a text to reread, you could do that. You can certainly jump forward. Um, the audio options are the same. And so you can adjust the rate of speech, choose a voice here as well. You can also tell Kurzweil the way you want the text read aloud and highlighted. Um, and you can change the position and challenge. <laughs> Um, and so if you wanted to move it away from the upper right, if it being in the upper right interfere with your ability to read that web page correctly, you can move it around. Um, I didn't point this out before, but for some reason, if you wanted the text highlighted but not read aloud, you would choose this button and it would still um, highlight the text, but it wouldn't read it aloud. And maybe this would be for someone who is practicing their own fluency where they wanted to read aloud or for some reason, you know, there could be different reasons where they just wanted it highlighted. Um, there still are the dictionary tools and the drop-down menu. Um, the translation um, lives just next to the dictionary tools here. Um, I'll skip over this. This is called screenshot reader, but this is just designed if for some reason Kurzweil couldn't select and read text aloud. That's when you can draw crosshairs around that text. It will bring it into the browser version of Kurzweil and then still be able to read that text aloud. And then last but not least, well, actually, there's one other thing too. There are some highlighter tools. Um, if a PDF opened on a web page, you would see one additional feature. I think it's purple and it's a PDF reader on the web. Um, but remember, in order to use the Read the Web extension, you need to add the extension to either your Chrome or your Firefox browser as a, as a first step. So that was a real high level overview of Kurzweil. Um, what I'd love people to do is to reach out as you begin using the program. I'd like to address any questions. I like hearing feedback on how it's working. Um, additionally, something seems like it's not working. If there are ideas for new features, we like hearing that as well. We're a small organization and um, extremely receptive to uh, new feature ideas. There's a specific um, email group that I send new features to. It's actually, we call it our wish list. And so what happens when those come in is our engineers put together lists and then they prioritize and figure out funding and how much it would cost for development. But we do like hearing about those thoughts and ideas as well. So before I close this out, are there, are there any questions on what I've shown today? or comments, thoughts about the tool. Okay, um, well, thank you so much for joining. I'll make sure I send the recording to you as soon as it's done. When I close it out, it'll take a couple minutes to be ready. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.